Tio Gojo back here again with another one my people and in today's video I am doing something that I do not usually do something that I did not want to do but I was pushed to do it so much that I felt like I had no choice but in the end this is what all of my people that subscribe to me mostly wanted and all the people in my discord wanted I have two favorite series in Shonen to read right now which is My Hero and also Jujutsu Kaisen and there's two people from these respected series that I both love that they want to see face off in a discussion, you know, inside of my head, what I think. And that is Shigaraki and Rayon Sukuna. And we will be discussing who will win out of those two in a fight. As I just said, I do not like to go into things like this. I really do not even want to do it because I feel like every series is best to be within their own series, you know. And with all that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. So first I will be explaining their character and then I will be explaining the powers and abilities that they both possess. And starting off, we will be starting off with Shigaraki. Tenko Shimura is a prodigy of one for all, or let me rephrase that, all for one. And he also has the quirk of all for one. His main quirk is decay, which he had before he got all for one. He's also the leader of the League of Villains, and he just wants to tear down everything All Might has built and also the Hero Society and everything the Hero Society stands for. And he is one unstable individual, I have to say. Very unstable. As I have already said, Shigaraki's main quirk is DK. But in terms of what it can do now as it was back then, it is very, very more powerful than it was. He can make it spread, almost like a Devil Fruit Awakening, you might as well say. Once he put his hands on the ground, everything just decays and everything connected to what he touched will decay. He also has a body that is superhuman due to the doctor modifying his body. And it is compared to the USJ Nobu. It was almost compared to All Might, but it was stated that it wasn't quite like All Might stated by the doctor. So this would mean that it's at least comparable to the USJ Nobu. And he was able to regenerate from Deku, able to regenerate from the prominence burn of Endeavor and still be alive after that. Although he was in cinders, very, very burned up to a crisp, you might as well say, he was still alive, but somebody took control of his body so he could stay alive, which was all for one. And he also has the quirk search. And any quirk he basically thinks of and he lays eyes on them, he can literally tell their weakness and their location. And that's what that quirk do. So that's very powerful. Not only that, he also has a shockwave quirk that we have seen him blow Deku back. We have seen him even blow Endeavor back with the shockwave quirk. And now time for the King of Curses. Ryama Sukuna, a demon of legend who existed a thousand years ago and where it is he was human when he existed a thousand years ago. And Jujutsu sorcerers in the Golden Age a thousand years ago sharpened up their skills to defeat him but they were ultimately defeated by him. And when he died, his body would remain as a special grade object and the shamans were not able to destroy his fingers. That is the background of Ryoman Sukuna. And Ryoman Sukuna also has some very interesting powers, I have to say. We don't know everything about him because he only has 15 fingers in the series so far. Sukuna's main weapon of his, you know, arsenal is slashing techniques. And he has two types of slashing techniques. He has one, which is dismantle, that works on inanimate objects, things with no cursed energy. And basically, let's say if you do have cursed energy, you can still be sliced by this attack. Because if you're standing in front of, let's say, a wall, as Jogo was, once he sends that slash to the wall, if you're in between that, you automatically get hit. And he also has cleave, which can adjust to the toughness of an individual skin 
and the cursed energy level, which means it can adjust to anybody, even if they don't have cursed energy, and adjust to the object. But in terms of the cursed energy level, it probably cannot adjust to it, or it probably can, depending on the level. But it can cut you and adjust to your skin as long as you are a solid object or solid in general. And Sukuna also has the ability of just raw strength, raw speed. Sukuna was able to overpower one of the strongest cursed spirits that we have seen so far. And this cursed spirit, which is Jogo, was compared to the people like Nabito in terms of speed. Although they said Nabito may be faster, but they both were still compared to each other. And Nabito has the trajectory sorcery technique, who is the second fastest sorcerer in Jujutsu Kaisen. With that technique, you can continuously build up speed. We have also seen Sukuna make it to destinations in a matter of just seconds, right at the moment Darius was down. And also destinations to other part of the city in a matter of seconds, literally. And in the fight with Nayoya and Maki, Nayoya had been already past the sound burial just going faster and faster and maki was keeping up with him i would have to at least say that that is massively hypersonic plus massively hypersonic for maki to be able to keep up with him and we know sukuna is faster than maki and maki was keeping up with somebody like that sukuna has also been able to dodge a meteor coming down at him point blank He's also been able to do Jogo's move, who was literally, you might as well say, made out of fire himself. Not like walking in fire, but he has a volcano on his head. And he did his technique and made it better, like a Hunter x Hunter Ging, you might as well say. And Sukuna was able to burn him to cinders. And this is the dude that was able to withstand multiple amounts of heat. Even in his domain, he said normal Jujutsu Sorcerer was supposed to burn right when entering. He was able to withstand that own heat and you have to be compatible with your technique in order to do domain expansions. And not only that, Sukuna durability is very impressive also. Sukuna was knocked through five buildings and he got up unscathed. And he also was able to remove the heart of, you know, his self and said he didn't need it. Yeah, he just didn't need it. So when it comes to organs and stuff like that, he doesn't need them to survive. We know that Jogo was able to survive without no head, and Sukuna is the king of curses, and they say that his reverse curse is also on another level. So with that being said, you have to basically obliterate Sukuna when fighting him. And the perfect guy for this obliteration would be no other than Tenko Shimura. So in this fight, I would say it's speed versus power. I would have to give the speed to Sukuna from what we have seen him make it to destinations in a matter of seconds and stuff like that. You know, it took Shigaraki like two jumps to get to Deku and stuff like that. But I'm just saying Shigaraki is still fast because he was able to keep up with Endeavor fairly good. But the thing about Shigaraki, he's more of a tank than anything else. And we have seen that numerous of times. And Sukuna is the opposite because Sukuna does not like to be touched. We've been seen in the domains where Yuji couldn't even hardly touch him. And we've been seen him tell Jogo to move and his hand was sliced before he even knew it. And he told Jogo, if you can touch me just one time, I would do what you say. And Jogo couldn't touch him even once. And we know Jogo was compared to people like Nabito, who can continuously build up speed and who has a technique that can easily break the sound barrier by many, many speeds. Remember, this is one of the fastest cursed spirits. A cursed spirit that literally blitz some dude that could divide one second into 24 movements. And this dude is amped with cursed energy because, you know, cursed energy can heighten your senses and it can also heighten your body movements. And he blitz three people. And one of those three people were a person with the heavenly restriction that we know also has heightened senses. And in that fight, Maki got bit up by some of the fish by Dagon, and then got kicked by Dagon, but she was still able to fight Dagon after that. So she wasn't fully hurt or nerfed or anything like that. So now let's talk about the wave of decay and can Sukuna outmaneuver the wave of decay and work his way around it. 
The answer to that would be yes. Reason being because we have people like Frappy and Ochiko that literally outran the wave of decay. And there was also people by Deku also outrunning the wave of decay. And we know that Sukuna is way faster than them people. And if it touches Sukuna, will Sukuna be able to do something at that moment? The answer to that is also yes. Reason being because we have people like Crust that was able to actually save Eraserhead while getting decayed. And we even have the Nobu that grab on to the leg of Eraserhead. And even if y'all want to say that, okay, if it touches Sukuna, that body part is gone. Not necessarily, because we know that Mahito had a effect on the soul, right? And when Junpei got transfigured, it had an effect on his soul. He changed his soul and stuff like that. But Mahito also stated that Sukuna can do something with his reverse curse, if he has reverse curse. And he stated that Sukuna would be able to do something for Junpei, would be able to save Junpei as long as he has reverse curse. And that would be a effect playing on the soul. So yes, he would be able to regenerate. And you have people like Toto that was able to chop off their hands to not get transfigured by Mahito within 0.2 seconds. Then Sukuna was able to literally, you might as well say freeze, freeze 0.2 seconds and talk to Mahito. Like, I'm not going to let you touch my soul. I'm not going to let you do that. In 0.2 seconds, just as like time froze, you know, so, and he stopped that. So I don't see the decay working on him. Shigaraki is going to need to grab Sukuna and hold him in place for that amount of time in order to decay him. And we also have a problem, which is Shigaraki. It's going to be hard to kill Shigaraki because Shigaraki has regeneration. We've seen Endeavor try to burn Shigaraki up and he still was able to regenerate when they first encountered each other. We even seen him take punches from Deku and he was regenerating and still fighting. But I do believe that Sukuna will do cleave or dismantle and once it cuts Shigaraki and he regenerates, he's going to instantly know like his regeneration is something that I have never seen before in terms of like fighting people up to this point, right? And then it would be domain expansion. And before we even go into domain expansion, I do want to state that Shigaraki can die to pressure and he can also die to heat. And these are basically two things that Sukuna has. And One for All actually stated that when Shigaraki was getting burned up by Prominence Burn, a Prominence Burn that wasn't even as powerful as the first Prominence Burn that Endeavor did. Because when Endeavor did the first Prominence Burn, he took the Nomu way higher than what he did. And he did a prominence burn just point blank in front of everybody, you know, not caring about nobody, you know what I'm saying? And they was able to withstand that heat, and it was stated that Endeavor was actually trying to save people, you know, from the first prominence burn he did against the Nomu. But as I just said, all for one literally stated that Shigaraki could have pummeled to his death and could have been burned to cinders by Endeavor. So, yes, like I said, once this domain expansion happened, you have Cleave and Dismantle. Cleave that can literally adjust to this man's skin and dismantle that can also adjust. And in this domain, Shigaraki will be picked under the laws of the domain, which would mean every attack that this dude Sukuna sends out, Shigaraki cannot dodge it because it's something called guaranteed hits. And we know that Sukuna was able to burn up Jogo, somebody who was able to withstand crazy amounts of heat. Then he was able to obliterate Maharaga and leave literally nothing, leave nothing but the wheel spinning on his head. And once again, if you want to equal out, if you want to say Shigaraki does have cursed energy and his emotions and all that stuff is cursed energy or whatever, then Shigaraki is really dead, you know. And the thing about the cleave technique, cleave can adjust to the toughness of a individual skin. And it can also adjust to the cursed energy level, depending on that cursed energy level. So even if he doesn't have cursed energy or does have too much cursed energy and it can't adjust to the level, it still can adjust to the skin of Shigaraki and slice him. So all I'm saying is Shigaraki is strong. He would even be a special grade if he was in the Jujutsu Kaisen universe. But fighting people like, let's say, Gojo or even Ken Jock Rapids say, I don't see him winning. And, you know, I haven't had people to say that, hey, yo, um, he can do a, he, they can't do a domain on air or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But the thing about domain, domains are a separate space. 
And not only that, Dagon was going to do a domain on air for the people information that actually said that. And with that being said, like I said, Shigaraki is strong, but the winner of this battle is Rayoma Sakuna. If you guys like this video, please make sure to subscribe. Gojo Tio, I'm out, and thank you.